Welcome back to chemistry class again. Alright, today's lab we're going to do is a Charles Law Lab. So the whole purpose of this lab, we're going to attempt to measure absolute zero. Now, one of the few things we're going to need, and we don't need it much, this lab is pretty simple. We're going to need our ring stand back again. If we need a ring stand, we need to go ahead and get a Bunsen burner set up. We're going to use wire gauze uh, and that beaker. Now, pretty much, this is the things that you've got either in your drawer or you know where to get already. Of course, we'll need a striker again. Uh, we're going to need a thermometer, kind of like this one, and you all know where to get those out of that wooden case. The other extra special thing we're going to need is a pipette that looks like this one. This one's known as a thin stem pipette, so got a little bit of moisture inside of it. But anyway, so this is a thin stem pipette. You good so far? So we're going to need this. We're going to need... One, two more things from over here. In this cabinet is where we keep the thermometer clamps. This is a thermometer clamp. And we're going to put this up on top of the ring stand and just kind of clamp it down. Kind of aim it where it will be in the center of that. And obviously that's where my thermometer, there's a couple of things on it. We can take the thermometer, put it in, and tighten it in place. Now a little word of advice, sometimes you get like a thermometer and it doesn't want to fit in there very well. If that ever happens, you can take like a little piece of paper towel and wrap it around your thermometer and it will really help clamp it down in there. It's just a little trick that you can use if you got to. Now also notice with the thermometer how I got it set up. I don't want my thermometer touching the bottom. In other words, I kind of want it suspended in the center so I get a better average. If you stick it all the way down on the bottom, it shows hotter than it is because of the burner underneath it, okay? Now, as of right now, I haven't lit anything. Basically, all I've got is the lab set up. I do need one more thing other than this pipette. Over here, I also need a 1,000 milliliter beaker. And the reason why I keep the 1,000 milliliter beakers over there is simple. They're too big to fit in the drawers. So we do need this. And now I'm actually kind of getting ready to start the lab. So I'm going to get started by just filling this thing up with water. And literally I'm just filling it up. I'm not measuring any of this water. I'm just going to get me a beaker full of water. And I'm going to go ahead and take part of this water and pour it into here. And this is usually when somebody will be like, well, how much water? Uh, maybe 100 milliliters, 125 milliliters. Maybe we'll say half full. So somewhere in this ballpark, 125 though would be a good safe estimate. So, so far it's pretty easy, right? You see the setup, notice how I haven't lit a Bunsen burner or anything like that yet. All I've done is I've got this thing full of water sitting here, and I've got that beaker about half full of water sitting over here. Now comes the fun part, and somebody can go ahead and get started on this right when they get in, one of your lab partners. We need to know the volume of this pipette which means we need to know how many drops of water this pipette will hold. And if you're not guessing it, that means someone has to count how many drops of water are in this pipette. Now, we'll stick in the water, we'll let go. And you'll notice that when we do that, it doesn't get completely full. You notice that air gap up at the top of it. So what we're going to do to get that air out, we're going to flip it over and then we're going to squeeze the air out of it. We're going to squeeze the air out, stick it back in the water again, and let go of it at this point. And now you can take a look at it, and there is, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but there are no air bubbles left in this whatsoever. At this point, someone in your lab group is going to have to start going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <laughs> seventy eight, ninety one, ninety two, ninety one, hundred and twelve. 113, 113 drops. Now, what I'm going to do next, and I'm not going to tell you how many drops it should be. Obviously, it's, I'll give you a hint, less than 200. But it's going to be quite a number of drops. What you're going to do, though, that first number of drops, let's say it's 113. Look at your data table. Do you see where it says temperature and then volume beside it on the data table? Temperature and volume, do you see that? I'm going to go ahead and just pretend that this is my data tail for the video and let me get another one. But I'm going to say, oops, I'm going to say I need to get a temperature. But my drops is 113 at 19.9 degrees. So at 19.9 degrees, 
I've got 113 drops in here. So that's how we fill in the first cell of the data table. You good so far? Now, this is when you actually get to light the burner. What I want to do is this. If my first temperature is 19.9, that's I know all my other temperatures. I want to do 29.9 next. I want to do, let's see, 39.9. Then I want to do 49.9. 59.9 and 69.9 so that's all the temperatures I want which means guess what temperature I've got to heat this water up to now if it's 19.9 right now I need to heat the water to what do I need to heat the water to? 29.9 .9. so I need to heat up this is actually the part y'all have problems with in this. This burner will heat the water up really fast. In other words, it will start heating up in a hurry. If you actually try and watch this, by the time it gets to 29.9, it will shoot past it. So what you've really got to do is this. You've got to kind of keep an eye on it, and you've got to go ahead and shut the burner off before you get to, because it will keep rising. What happens if you rise too much? Well, if it goes too much, you can always just take a little bit. Of, don't do it with a don't do it with this pipette, but just get a pipette. And if it goes up too much, you can just add more water back to it and cool it down. Okay, that's a matter of fact, and you're going to do that. Like right now, you see, I've only been heating it for what? I haven't been going a minute, have I? Mm -hmm. It's already 26. And look at this. Here it goes. 26, 27, 28. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off. Stop it. Stop it. No. Dog. No. 30. It's already. I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to break my glass. But I'm going to go ahead and pour a little water back in. And this is what y'all are going to have to be very careful. This is y'all's most important thing is you're going to be getting this temperature right. Ha ha ha. So maybe you shouldn't get quite as <laughs> carried away as me. Ah, come on, back down. Now, you're also noticing something. What happens if you end up filling this beaker up? Yeah, yeah pour some water out if you have to. And I've actually got it back down to about 29.9. Matter of fact, if you play with it, it will kind of settle out a little bit the way you want it to. What you're going to do is when you get to the temperature, and y'all, it's only going to be on the temperature you want pretty quick. It's probably going to either rise or fall. That's the hardest part of life. Are you ready for this? Stick the pipette down in there. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,018, 1,019,020. So stick it down in here for 20 seconds. Now pinch the top of the pipette bulb off. So in other words, pinch, come over to the camera, show you what I mean. Pinch the pipette bulb off. So I'm going to hold it in here for 20 seconds. In other words, I'm going to hold it in here open for 20 seconds. And after 20 seconds, I'm going to pinch it. And now watch this. Are you ready? And this is important when you write your procedures. Submerge the entire pipette underwater. You see what I've done? Put the entire pipette underwater and let go. Now I want you to think about something. I don't know if it even did anything or not, but maybe it did a little something. I want you to think about something. When you put this into the water, upside down, empty, what's going to happen? It's going to heat the air up inside there. That heated air is going to leave. When we pinch it off, it creates a vacuum inside here where we force that air out. When we put it down in here, the water cools off. So what's going to happen to it when we let go? If that's a vacuum, what's it going to do? It's going to suck air in. But instead of air, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen drops of water is what it's sucking in. Now I'm going to go back to the data table. Here's the thing. That fifteen drops that I just counted, I'm going to add back to the one thirteen, which means my new volume is basically add fifteen on to one thirteen is what we're going to end up doing. So our, my new volume is 128 drops. This is the part where everybody messes up. 
from here on out, every time you do this and you count like drops like that, you add back every time to that first number that you did. You don't add back. So let's say we do it for 39.2. We heat it up to 39.9. What are we going to do? Stick it in the water after we got the 39.9. Pinch it. Now what? Submerge. Submerge it. Let go. Let go. And then what should happen? It should suck up some water. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 23. So what do I do with that 23 drops right now? What does that 23 do? Add, add, it, to the first 113. add it to the 113. So we're going to add that back to it. What did I say? 23. So we're at 136 is my new volume. So we're going to add everything back to that first thing. And we're going to keep doing it until you get to the last temperature, and that's it. And again, if you get too much water, you can always just take, pour some out, add a little cool water back into it if you need to, and try and get it to where you want your temperature to be. Do you have any questions about how to do this? Well, if you didn't want a video, your own video now. Hello, YouTube. All right. Now, just for one additional little demonstration, kind of Charles's law. A little water bottle here. <laughs> Got us a water bottle. I'm just going to pour a little isopropyl alcohol in there. Yeah, that's plenty. Pour a little alcohol in there. things. Isn't it always when somebody does something stupid and blows somebody up? In the event of a lawsuit, i got to throw that camera away now. At least the memory card. Treat that. Maybe I won't blow it up. Although this is pretty full of alcohol. <clears throat> Paper towel. Wait, any chance you to strike that burner over there for me? sniff this but no way it could catch on fire again. No, Did you notice really the smart. whole little whoosh sound of the air? It goes back to this very the thing. Oh yeah the sink is on fire. Yeah because there was alcohol in it. Maybe I shouldn't YouTube this one. I put the alcohol in here which was kind of flammable obviously and uh, when I lit the alcohol on fire, though, did you notice something? Most people think the flame shot up and out of it. Did you? Yeah, did you pay attention? Why did the flame shoot into it? Vacuum. Yeah, we created a vacuum. That high temperature inside here forced air out, which ended up creating a vacuum inside here, and we actually sucked the air. You heard the air shooting down into the bottle is what you were actually hearing. The same reason that the air is going to shoot back into your little, or the water into your pipette when you do this lab for that reason. All right, you got it? Mm -hmm. All right, bye everybody. Love y'all. <laughs>